Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, we will start uh, uh, implementing our clear all components and update components method and see what, what we can do. Because in the last videos, we implement, implemented the delete component method, populate components, create components, uh, as, along with a slew of other methods as well. So without further ado, let's start. So for delete component, uh, clear all components, we will just activate the delete component for, for each of the elements inside the DB set. So we will use the for each loop. So to start for each loop is just like starting an if if loop. Okay, for each something. Uh, so what? So uh, how do we use a for each loop? Uh, eh, the, the syntax is as such. Okay, press I for insert. For, uh, for each var component in uh, What's the list? Okay, the list is this uh, DB context component collection. This dot DB context dot component collection. Okay, so over here the 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 object which we iterate through in this component collection. Uh, this is an enumerable, right? It's a DB set. It's an enumerable, so we can use a for each loop on it. Okay. So um, yeah, the the thing is that for this uh, object right here, you do not have to name it object or you do not have to name it component. You can use O or whatever, just as long as uh, uh, what what this represents. No matter how you name it, okay. This this represents the the objects, okay. The objects that are contained within this list. So you can name this anything you want, but once you name this uh, object or component as it, as such here you have to keep using it again and again inside your for loop so what do i mean all right so for example we want to uh, we want to iterate through uh, this list and since we are clearing all components we need to uh, we need to delete everything right so uh, we need to activate the delete component uh, method so we'll use the this dot uh, delete component Okay, and what is the object we want to delete? Okay, we want to delete this component object right here. All right, we want to delete this component object right here. But if I if I just change this to let's say ABC, okay, if I change this to ABC, I can, but I must change the component which I want to delete also to ABC. Okay, this code will work. Okay, this code will work. It should work. Okay, so I'm hot reloading. It should work. See, it works. It works fine. But of course, to a, a person reading this, it might you might not make sense what this uh what this for loop is for. So it's always better to tell the user what exactly we are dealing with here. What kind of uh, object we are dealing with here. So so we are delete we are deleting components. Okay, components in the machine in a flow loop. Okay, so this is what the clear all components method should look like. Alright, for the update component method, we will use attach, okay? We will use attach, and what does attach method look like? So, uh, uh, let's look at the DB set. Okay, DB set. Alright, okay. DB set T entity should have an attach method, okay? This is our attach method, which of course I will leave it in the description. It says attaches the given entity to the underlying context underlying the set. That is the entity is placed into context. Uh, placed into the context, the DB context, in the unchanged state, just as it's been read from the database. So uh, okay, so what what is the uh, return type? So uh the parameters are okay this this entity is actually returned to the environment okay so what is this entity okay. entity uh, if you if let's say uh, we have a component here this component here is this uh, entity right here whereas the type of the object is called T entity which is the entity type okay entity types are Entity types are uh, okay. Entity types. 
uh, yeah, they, are, they refer to, let's say, this uh, component. They can refer to class types, they can refer to strings, integers, whatever. But generally speaking, for uh, entity framework call, you refer them to your, your class types. Uh, for specifically what kind of objects you want to store inside the list. This is the entity thing we are talking about. Okay. So the entity, the entity itself. Okay, the entity itself. Uh, will have. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the entity itself will be attached to the uh. Okay, attached to the environment, or attached to the database set. Okay or attached to the context rather. So what's the method look like? So for update, for update, we will use the attach method. Okay, so we'll do this uh, method. Okay, this dot db context dot uh, component collection. So remember this is a db set. This is a database set. And then we can run the attach method dot attach, okay, which is this uh, attach method. What does it take in? It needs to take in an entity. So what are you attaching to this? The DB set. We are attaching this uh, component right here. Okay, we are attaching this component right here. And uh, well, update component uh, tends to take in an ID as well of course uh, so you will need to uh, be very sure which kind which component id uh, you have meaning to say all right this this component here needs to have an id it needs to have an id so you need to attach this uh, component id you need to make sure this component has this exact id so yeah so that you're updating the right component so what are, what are we going to do we're going to say component dot id equals to id okay so this makes sure that the component id is this id which we specify here then what we are going to do is that we attach this new component to the db set okay this is the db set and this is the db context so db context will have the db set okay once we are done with the db set uh, what we usually do is to change the state of this uh, okay change the state of this uh, uh, entity right okay so hold on no. yeah okay so never mind yeah we are just going to uh, move on to the next line okay the next the next thing we're supposed to do is to uh, change this change the the entity state to modify okay so Let's see, uh, where is this? Uh... Okay, never mind. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just write out the code first, okay? Um, this this, this, this uh, attach method actually returns a entity right here. Okay, or well, returns an entity right here. It returns the entity itself. Okay, so what, what have we done? We have attached this specific entity called component to the component collection which is a db set under the db context all right all right once this component is uh, attached okay this and you can see this function actually uh uh what do you call it it attaches the let's see yeah once you attach this uh att attach this object it will then return another copy of this object maybe it's slightly different but yeah you can actually save it under uh, yeah maybe you can say a uh, var uh, attached component equals to okay this dot component uh, collection that not attached okay so it's basically more or less the same as this component but uh, yeah, entity framework call works in a in a sort of a hand wavy way. I don't know what's the code going on behind, but uh, what I've seen uh, other people do, for example, Kurt Venkat, uh, Venkat uh, and his uh, uh, Prajin Tech. Yeah, he sh he uh, showed us this, showed me this uh, through this video. I learned that 
uh, you use the you attach the component first and then uh, you change this uh, attach component state okay attach component dot state okay somehow it has a state a, a state variable or state property and uh, the property should be as such okay Microsoft dot entity framework call so this is the namespace entity state dot modified okay and then after that you run the same changes so this is just something uh, this is just code I have seen uh, other people use like uh, Venkat uh, uses it uh, so uh, from Parajim Tech uh, so I will just use the same code right here okay it works so I'm not going to ask why okay so db context dot save changes okay so that's the update component somehow it seems to work and we are more or less ready okay more or less okay there's still one more thing to do okay this this thing will become quite obvious once we try to do a dependency injection with component repo maria db so i'm going to close everything and I'm going to try the dependency injection using component repo MariaDB. Okay, so let's open program.cs. Okay, and then we are going to inject instead of component repo RAM, I'm going to uh, comment this out. And instead, uh, I'm going to yank this out and paste it here. I'm going to change this to component repo MariaDB okay I'm going to save and quit and I'm going to uh, shut down and restart okay so dot net watch okay so uh, we, we are we are uh, having errors right here Okay, what, what's, what's the error? We can actually take a look. Alright, so uh, errors are as follows. Okay, some services are not able to be constructed. Okay, the scope implementation type MariaDB unable to resolve service for type IAppDB context. Okay, so what's going on here? Okay, what's going on here? So if we take a look at the uh, component repo, mariadb.cs, okay, you will see that it actually needs a few dependency injections. One is this uh, appdb context. One is the i component collection, uh, component collection. So let's see whether these these things are actually injected properly. So we have not done dependency injection. So vim models, model history, uh, mariadb.cs. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Component. Uh, repo. MariaDB. And let's open the program file as well. Okay. So what do we need? Okay. We uh, we need uh, IMDB context and I component collection. So uh, in order to make this MariaDB uh, thing work, we need to inject its dependencies as scope services. Builder.services.com add scope we need to add scope services okay so we have not done dependency injection yet so i component collection okay and what's the component collection that we need to open so let's open up node 3 and go to where is it models i uh, component list right here Okay, so uh, we'll just call it a component list. Okay, so it's uh, added as a scoped service. Oh wait, oh, component collections already here as a singleton. So I'll not, I'll not need to add that. So, uh, oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, the service we need to add is our AppDB context. Okay, so let's add the app db context. Let's look at the syntax carefully. So, uh, 
insert okay i app db context db context or app db context so this is one of the versions of the db context that we can add as a scope service of course this is not the, the proper way to add it i've used the wrong brackets obviously uh, but the the proper way to add it is using this thing called app db context pool but in case that confuses you i will just use this normal way the traditional way of adding uh, db con uh, uh, dependency injections first okay we will change it later on but i'm just showing you that this thing actually works okay services add scope okay it's complaining there's a lot of things uh, program.cs line 14 Okay, builder.services.add scope. Oh yes, I'm forgetting a comma right here. Okay, there you go. Okay, now the thing works. We go to data storage. It says what? Uh, it says unknown database, component database. Okay, what what's going on here? Okay, so basically, let's uh, save and quit. Basically, uh, uh let's see. Let's go to mariadb.cs. Yeah, basically. Uh, oh right, for, forgot. Add db context first. Let's go to add db context. Yes. All right. So basically, uh, when we started our add db context, we told add db context, please connect to this server called localhost. Please look for this database called component database. Use this user and this password. All right. So uh, when when we go and look for this uh, database called component database okay so we look at mariadb uh, and we do show uh, show databases okay we look uh, it's looking for component database right here i don't have component database under my my list of databases so uh, we will have to create databases so this is okay create database mariadb yeah, this is very, very simple. So let's just create a database name. Okay, very simple. So what's the database name? We have to do a... So before we, before we start using this, we have to create a database first. So it's create database uh, component database. Okay, must, must spell correctly. Okay, then semicolon. Then query okay. It should work this time. Okay. And then you'll say, oh, component collection doesn't exist. Say the table component collection doesn't exist. So uh, not only do you have to make the database, you have to make the proper table as well called component collection with all the correct columns and everything. So is that an easier way of doing it rather than doing it manually? Okay, the answer is yes. So let me, let me, let me first start by uh, showing database. Show databases. Okay, I'm going to drop this uh, component database. Drop database component data base. Okay, so show databases. That should have been dropped. Okay, the 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 thing is that uh, you don't want to be making this database and these database tables manually. Okay, so you don't don't use this. This is not the not the way we are looking for. What we are instead looking for is. Well, something called migrations okay migrations is a way to create tables okay so i'll create your database using auto.net core asp.net core generate a code so one of the ways is migrations this is the traditional way but okay thing is that you need to install yet another thing it's another layer of complexity you have to install this uh, .NET, uh entity framework tool you have to learn about what migrations are uh update migrations all that kind of thing so uh i'll start with the simple ones first we'll 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 start with a, a way that doesn't need to use migrations so what how do we use how do we create database without migrations because that's another level of complexity okay so uh instead the migrations are the more complex method of creating and deleting databases if you have, if you want something simple you can use this create and drop apis right here it says the ensure created and ensure deleted methods right here uh, provide a 
Lightweight alternative to migrations for managing database schema, these methods are useful in scenarios where data is transient and can be dropped if the schema changes. So what is this schema? What is, what is, this, uh, what is the, the change talking about? Okay, so let's open up uh, component.cs. You'll notice that uh, you'll notice that it has a few properties here. Okay, ID, name, component type, temperature, pressure, mass flow rate, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, these these are some of the properties that we need to give to each of our components, each pump, each pipe, uh, heat exchanger, whatever else. So uh, the thing is that maybe you have you want to uh, make a. Uh, Let's say you make a database first, and then it has all these components, right? All these properties, excuse me. The ID, the name, component type, etc, etc. Then let's say you added a few components, maybe 5 or 10 components. Then after that, after you, you find yourself adding your components, you forgot, you find that, oh great, I need to add another property. Okay, the component can be turned on or turned off, you know, you know what I mean? It can be turned on or turned off, and then uh, what then do we do with our database now, okay? I want to add an on-off switch for each component so that the pump can be turned on, the heater can be turned on, the cooler can be turned on, something like that. So I will, I will need to, uh, uh, okay, after making my uh, uh, table, after making my table, I will need to change the columns of the table. So uh, normally that is done using migrations. So that, that's why you, you call it migrations. We can talk more about this next time. But if you don't really care about, you know, uh, the data inside your inside your uh, inside your database. If you don't really care too much, you can use this ensure created and ensure deleted. Or rather, uh, if you don't really care that uh, you know you want to change the columns halfway through or something, you can use this ensure delete created and ensure deleted methods. Okay, in order to make your database table. All right, so. Uh, so well, what do we do? Okay, I'm going to use this uh, ensure created and ensure deleted inside this uh, uh, i component repository. Now I'll open up i component repository as well, so that uh, okay, let me undo that. Uh, let's quit. Let's quit. V split this. Yes. Okay. B N. Yeah. Okay. You look at this iComponent repository, it has all these methods right here. Well, all these methods right here. Uh, okay, so let's see. We have to find a way of uh, creating and dropping these uh, databases instantly. So um, where, where is a good place to make this database? Okay, probably uh, not right here because uh, ensure deleted and ensure created uh, database. Uh, this is actually executed within the uh, DB context class. Okay, this is actually done within the DB context class. Okay, so where's the DB context class? Okay, the DB context class is here. It's called add DB context. Okay, all right, over here. Basically, when we start our FDB context, we usually do our server configuration and everything. Okay, okay, my indentation here is not nice. I want to change it. Okay, equal, equal, yes. That will make it. Pressing the equal sign in Vim actually helps it to indent properly. Okay, so uh, we have our uh, data databases here. And it's good to, uh, it's good to have the ensure created and ensure deleted uh, uh, ensure created and ensure deleted for uh, database creation. It's good to house it within our AppDB context. Okay, so so that when we start our AppDB context, the once the constructor is called, we will start. We will just start uh, ensuring that this database is created or deleted. Okay, so uh, let's let's run it properly. Okay, so. Uh, this FDB context will be a more simple version because I do not use uh, migrations over here. So I'll I'll say FDB context. Yeah. I'll, I'll call this FDB context simple. 
and then uh, of course I will change the dependency injection over here in program.cs or maybe it's let me check whether I opened it up okay it's already open okay nerd3 nerd3 open up the okay let's change the program.cs to uh, change this to appdb context simple because uh, the, the, the simple way is not to not use migrations okay okay so let's uh, yeah let's see whether we can get this thing working so this is how we inject our dependencies okay so how do we uh, get the database thing so I will, I will make a I will make two methods right here okay void uh, create database and void delete database okay so this these two methods I will create for the IMDB context and I will implement this here uh, public void create database okay and then how does it get implemented okay we will just use this ensure created okay so uh, this dot database ensure created because this is already a DB context kind of a class. So you can see this dot database dot ensure created. Okay, that's one. Second is public void delete database. And what we do, okay, is this dot database dot ensure deleted. Okay, and of course. This is uh, something that's not as common as migrations. This, hmm. okay, to create and delete databases without migrations, use uh, this website, okay? I will, I will leave the website here. You will see in GitHub. Okay, so this is the ensure created, uh, create, delete database and uh, create database kind of a thing. So the void method should be here. Let me quit the nerd tree and let's go to uh, where we start our MariaDB repository. Where's the MariaDB repository? Yeah, there you go. Component repo MariaDB. Of course, this one, this one, uh, since I'm using the, the simple method that doesn't use the database. Okay, I will just I will just call this component repo simple MariaDB simple MariaDB. Okay, why is it simple? Because uh, uh, it, because I'm not using all the the so called uh, more advanced methods like uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, migrations and all that. Okay. So normally people use migrations. I don't. I'm not using migrations here. So. I'm not going to call, uh, call this a normal FDB context. I'll just call it the simple, uh, I mean, the the repository I want to mark it is, uh, uh, I want to mark it as a simple repository, okay? And I'll make a comment here. The repository is called simple because uh, we don't use, okay, I will use, put the thing, it's called simple because we don't use EF core migrations. Okay. And I'll add a comment here also. Open. Uh, this app DB context is called simple because we don't use EF core migrations. Okay. So this is how, how things are done. So remember, dependency injection is here. We we'll need to uh, perf perform our service addition, a scope. Okay, and inside our constructor, we want to make sure. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can uh, create the database first. So we will make the database here. This dot db uh, db context dot create database. Okay. And that will ensure that our database is uh, created. Okay, so if uh, I'm also going to add another, 
method inside the i component repository in case we want to delete or update databases as well this is getting a bit messy okay i think i just missed that let's go oh yeah there you go okay so okay void create database okay this is going to create the database okay i'm going to leave it here uh, these are here to delete and create databases especially if we don't use migrations in EF core okay so delete database and create database okay so uh, I will need to uh, do the implementations right here okay public void public void create database okay and then I'll open up the new line okay this dot db context dot create database you'll we'll call that method in and again for delete database okay this dot db context dot delete database all right so that's it all right so uh that's all uh so this is in case we want to delete and create the database makes it uh, easier to handle all right uh let's see whether this thing works we'll restart our app okay and you'll complain because uh there are a few things here what is this is a uh, method must have a return type line 17 component repo maria db okay let's let's go look at this 17 okay all right okay the constructor name changes so i'll need to put it here Component repo simple MariaDB. So that should solve that problem. Okay, AppDB context uh, must have a return type. Again, constructor name has to change along with the uh, constructor name has to change with uh, the class name, right? So AppDB context. So we have to put the simple thing here. Simple. So that should get rid of the first two. Next thing, next two things is that component repo RAM does not implement the members create database and delete database honestly it doesn't it doesn't need to implement this so uh, I'm going to just open up nerd tree okay I'm going to open up models I'm going to open up component repo RAM and what does it need to implement the uh, delete and create database so I'm just going to make it like not do anything okay void uh, public create database no, 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 I'm not going to make it do anything delete database also not going to make it do anything delete database okay oh right <laughs> it should be public void not void public okay DRW okay void DW let's insert void Okay, I should get used to more Vim shortcuts. I'm doing things a bit too slow. All right, there we go. So what, what have we just done? We have implemented the create and delete databases so that if we want, we should be able to create and delete our databases right here. So again, I can start adding one, two, three, one, two, three, add component. Okay, oh, all right, all right. So apparently uh, the thing actually works. The databases actually work but there are a few more bugs this time round because uh because as we add components like this right here so for example hi 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 add component it says duplicate entry one for key primary so with databases we have to be very careful about our ids and then this is uh this is something we, we need this is not like the uh component repository 
uh, in a RAM, we can just add things with duplicate ID numbers. For databases, things are a lot stricter. So that's something we'll have to deal with a bit later on in a future video. Because I think now uh, 35 minutes in already. So uh, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I can use the clear all button. Okay, unhandled exception. All right, great. Okay, let me save and quit all first. And then I will stop this. I will see you in the next video. We'll start, we'll try to debug all of these uh, little things right here. Thanks for watching. But at least, at least we are using the MariaDB things right here. If we take a look, uh, show databases. Okay, you see the component database is already here. And then use, uh, use component database, database, and show tables. Okay, show star, uh, select star, sorry, select star from component collection. Okay, you'll see that the tables actually show up here. So the entity framework core thing is actually working. Okay, just you have all these tiny little bugs that you have to squish out so that uh, the thing can work from and work smoothly from the end user perspective. So at least that's some progress. So, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we can make even more progress. See you.